How you doing, YouTube? Matt, Matt's Beer Reviews, back with yet another review. We have in front of us a bourbon barrel aged English Old Ale called Last Bullet and Testament from Monday Night Brewing. I've done my fair sh share of Monday Night Brewing. I never had anything from them, but I was lucky enough to kind of popped up and asked me if they could send me some beers a while ago. It was right after a gentleman down south sent me a little beer mail of local um, stuff, and one of those Monday Night Beers were in there, and it was like really odd timing. But uh, anyway, um, they send me stuff every so often. Um, they've sent me Berliner Weisses. Um, they've sent me, you know, Stouts. They've sent me Hazies. They sent me all kinds of stuff. And he, he always comes in a nice package and a little card, and it says, you know, uh, uh, usually has a very kind of, I don't want to say generic, but kind of like, um, thank you for your consideration. It'll be written on the card or something like that. You, not personalized. But this time, this one landed, and the card said, thank you very much for your honest and unbiased reviews um and i feel like this is the first time <laughs> that it was a personalized mail because one okay they actually kind of you know tip their cap at me kind of saying what i think and two they sent me a bourbon barrel aged english old ale list it, if they're not watching um then they just lucked out because they're sending me the shit that they know i would like um but it still has to be good it's kind of one of those weird things where a brewery would be like, oh, he really digs English old ales, and he likes barrel-aged beers. Let's send him an English old ale, barrel, uh, barrel, bourbon barrel-aged English old ale. Makes sense, right? Be like, that's what he likes. <sighs> yes and no, because you have to kill it. I'm really hard on beers that I really enjoy. I've had so many of them. You drink more of what you like, you become a bit pickier um, with what you like, and you expose yourself more to what you like. So you got to show and prove. Let's see if this shows improves. Uh, Last Will and Testament, English, or uh, Burn Barrel Aged English Old Ale. Can't even get the words right. It's got a nice little weird demon yak on it, or demon goat. I have a demon goat called Jerry. You guys met him. It says here, Last Will and Testament is an straightforward, adjunct-free English Old Ale that has been aging away in burn barrels for 14 months. Say what? Um, yeah, with Maris Otter. That <laughs> goes in those delicious beers. As a backbone, this big ale has notes of caramel, raisin, and tobacco. Speaking my language. Label-wise, I've always digged their labels. I like the artwork on it. I like the texture. You can, you can hear that nice textured kind of paper. Their, their labels are cool. I dig them. So, I really want to visit down there. Um, they'd be perfectly honest with you. Um, I've never been down Atlanta before, and it seems like the breweries are kind of blowing up down there. And, um, you know, not that I've loved everything Monday Night has sent me. Uh, if you guys watch my reviews, you know. Um, that some stuff has been hit or miss, but um, for the most part, I've dug what they've done. I dug the variety at which they've done it. That's kind of one of my big sticking points for breweries that I love. If a brewery does a beer and it does it really well, I'm all about it. But when someone can do multiple styles really well, it kind of really turns me on. Pinky finger, a uh, quarter of a pinky finger um, of khaki colored super tight tobacco bubbles. It looked like a barrel aged beer. Uh, rich darkness, not the darkest beer in the history of mankind. It's definitely not stout level. Probably looks that way on camera, but she's got a rich, dark brownness to her. So, yeah. She looks like barley wine. They called an old ale. I mean, that's kind of like I've, I've talked to ad nauseum over the years about my kind of thoughts on what's an old ale and where it lies. You know, old ales, you can see them at 5%. Some people say I have a 5% old ale. Some people say I have a 13% old ale. To me, it's that anywhere between 8 to 13. It doesn't really matter, but it, it's... There's a difference between an old ale and a barley wine for me. Let's see if this one possesses those differences. Burps. Nose. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting there. Yeah, this is, this is the, oh yeah. Oh, that's exact, see that's the stuff. That's the stuff. That's the rich, like, date, Figginess. Talk about tobacco. I didn't really talk about tobacco in beer. I don't think I've ever gotten tobacco from beer. What I get, and I think this is the same nose. I think th some people speak different languages but are talking about the same thing. To me, this has a kind of weathered leatherness to it. That's kind of how I, I think when people talk about tobacco, that's the way that comes off for me. So it's got that rich caramel toffee sugar daddy. We've, I've talked about that ad nauseum. When you get the aged old ales, aged English barley wines that kind of get enough age on it, they start to get towards the sugar daddy realm, 
then with a ton of age on it, they start to get towards that um, raisin net realm. So you get that kind of rich sugar daddy kind of thing. The raisin comes with it. I'm not really getting to that raisin portion here. I'm definitely getting that sugar daddy bit and piece. The bourbon is not hot at all. It's definitely there. You get a rich kind of red fruit off of it, but there's no heat to it whatsoever. It doesn't smell like a big beer. I didn't even call out the ABV on it, 12%. It's just rich, huge. I mean, every word, toffee, caramel, figs, dates, red fruit, all those things. Um, there's a soft smokiness from the barrel, nothing too crazy, but enough to let you know it's there. It's not char or burn or anything, but there's a little bit of almost like umami kind of savoriness to it. But sugar daddy is the word that kind of keeps popping in my mind. Yeah, let's dive in. Cheers. It's delicious. It's delicious. Um, it's a bit more bittering and a bit more charry in the barrel than I thought it would be. Getting a soft little hop from it. Nothing too crazy, enough bittering. I actually welcomed the amount of bittering that can bounce off a lot of sweetness. This is an English Old Ale Asian bourbon barrel at 12%. It's going to be sweet. But that little bit of hoppiness, a little bit of earthy, it's dirty, earthy, old school, kind of fuggly hop with that barrel char, which is surprisingly a little bit smoky, a little bit more charry, a little bit more burnt than the nose will let you to believe, kind of tempers that sweetness a bit. Um, the sweetness is, is sugar daddy all the way. Um, there is a little bit of heat to it, but enough to let you know you're drinking a big beer, not necessarily a hot heat or a burn or anything like that. Yeah, it's delicious. It's a little bit thin. It's weird because it's not thin all the way. It's like first initial sip, you get this nice creaminess through it, almost throughout the whole beer, about three quarters away, then it just kind of finishes thin. But it, you're, you're left with a kind of sticky, kind of sugary residue in your tongue, so it adds a dimension of depth to the actual texture to it. I like it. I dig it. I am not the biggest proponent of aging barrel-aged beers. Not a... I'm not saying I would age this for the long haul. Like some of my favorite beers, if you watch my reviews, I love English Old Ales. I like Barley Wines. I like your Thomas Hardy's, your Old Stocks, all that stuff. I age those. Non-barrel age, bottle condition version beers, I'll age those for 20 years and be totally cool with it. Um, barrel age stuff, I really don't like to go too long haul on aging, but I could see about two, one to two years doing wonders for this beer. I could see it rounding out, being a little bit denser, a little bit creamier, and hashing out that um, raisinette thing I look forward to so much with age, but it's damn, it's damn tasty, man. It's almost like that, like that spiciness, it's, the charriness is almost like a, like a spicy blackstrap molasses thing as opposed to just a brown sugar kind of caramel thing. And it brings that added component to it. I like that spicy, hoppy barrel thing combining, playing off that sweetness. Mm. Yeah, tasty, delicious. Exactly. The beer, the kind of beer that tugs at my heartstrings. It's, 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 it's a style that, I mean, you know, the whole barley wine is life thing and all that stuff. We're getting, people are getting there. Sure, more times than not, a lot of the barley wine and life stuff is very kind of new school um, uh, barley wine. A little bit of American barley wine, a little bit more kind of like in your face kind of barley wine. This is where uh, the refined portion of barley wine and his life goes to these kind of beers, the old stocks with age, the Coonan barrel aged beers, those are the beers that are really the upper echelon of the barley wine movement, especially in the United States. And this one is definitely worthy of being in that company because it's pretty damn tasty stuff. Again, you're talking to a card carrying member of, uh, of barley wine lovers United, whatever you want to call it, well before Barley Wine is life, I was barley whining in life, um, and this is damn tasty stuff, yeah, they knew exactly who they were sending to, but like I said, if you don't nail it, man, I'm not going to poop on it, but this is not poopable material, this is, uh, yeah, savoring material, mm. delicious, so let's talk about it, it's one of the better barley wines, barrel aged old ales, that I've had as of late. Yes. Um, 
might not be the best, but it's definitely worthy of being up there. Um, uh, value availability, no idea was sent to me. Maybe somebody down Georgia or anybody out there knows the pricing on this. Well, let me know. Realistically, I, I would like this to be less than $17 a bottle in a perfect world. I would like it to be closer to 12 But I think the way the bottle pricing is nowadays, if they're charging more than 17 that would suck. Um, and leave you with, if you like what we like this, if you like all the beers I mentioned, Thomas Hardy, uh, GW Lees, although GW Lees is a weird one. It has its own kind of yeast profile that is very unique to itself, but you know what I'm talking about. Your big, rich, old barrel-aged beers, English old ales and barley wines. If you dig those kind of beers, this is definitely worth picking up, especially if you like, like your, even your new school Americanized ones, your canes of the world, the way they throw their old ales and barley wines out there. This is up there with that. It's very tasty stuff. So you see this, I don't know if it's a shelf sitter or bar, brewery only, but if those are the kind of beers you dig. It's worth picking up. So there you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Down there, if you want to talk about it, massive beers. If you want to check me out doing the social media stuff, beer massive. If you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing, and hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a nice little uh, burn barrel age old ale right now. And hope to see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>